and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyra and I make videos on tips, tricks, and organization for small space living. Today's video is all about things that you do not need if you're moving into a small apartment or a studio apartment. So when I moved into the studio apartment I'm in right now, I was coming from living in a house. So I was used to having two bedrooms, my living room, my dining room, and my kitchen all being completely separated. And now I just have one big room where everything lives. It's definitely a different mindset going from having a space where you have those designated areas and you feel like you need to fill them to then living in one space where you have to make the most of every square inch and make it work for you the best you can. So these are a couple of things that either I thought I needed and I moved into my studio with me and then realized I didn't need or the things I thought about in advance and realized I didn't need to bring with me from my house. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a dining table. I don't know about you, but I literally never ate at my dining table. I know it's not the best, but I like to eat on my couch. I like to watch Netflix while I eat. It's just what I do. And if I'm not eating on my couch, I eat at my countertop. For me, a countertop feels a lot more casual than eating at my dining table for some reason. And it was just something I never did. So when I moved into my studio, I knew that. And I was like, you know what? I'm not getting a dining table. It's not worth this space to me. I'll get a rolling island that has countertop space that I can put stools up to. So that way that can be my table if I want to sit at like a proper table. But I also still eat on my couch a lot. No part of me is missing having a dining table at all. If you are also someone who you find that you never actually eat at your dining table and you typically move to your couch or your countertop or wherever it is that you prefer to eat, don't bring a dining table. You don't need one then. It's so much easier to just save that space and eat somewhere else. Second is a desk. And I do have a desk in my current apartment and I do use my desk, but I also use my countertop just as much as my desk. I think it's important about just finding a workplace that works for you and whether that is a desk or a countertop, whatever you need to facilitate your best mindset for working is what you need to do. So I personally do like having my desk because I know it's a good place for me to go and focus. But in the past, I've had desks in my room where I just never ever used them and they just sat there and I would put stuff on them. And in that case, it's not a good use of my space. If I wasn't using my desk, I would happily get rid of it and do something better with that space that I'd actually use it for. The third thing I wanna to talk to you about is kitchen gadgets. This one is hard for me and hurts my little soul because because your girl loves to cook. But there are so many random kitchen appliances that are so big that I do not have space for. Number one being a coffee maker. Coffee makers are huge and take up a ton of counter space and I literally do not have space for a coffee maker. I drink a lot of tea, so for me it made a lot more sense to get a hot water kettle and use that on a drip coffee carafe versus me having my hot water kettle and a coffee maker. Because with the hot water kettle I can make both my coffee and my tea and it just saves me having two giant appliances. Today I feel like there's so many crazy big appliances from a kitchen mixer to an air fryer to a, a instant pot to a food processor to a deep fryer, a dehydrator. I could go on. There's so many of them. So it's really important that you figure out what is important to you and what will you use the most and then take that. So for me, instead of having a rice cooker, a pressure cooker, and a crock pot, I just brought my instant pot and I use my instant pot all the time. So it's really worth it for me to have that. If you are someone who likes the Instant Pot but also wants an air fryer, there's like, I think it's the Ninja is a device that does both of those things. So you could use that instead of bringing both. Instead of bringing like a big bulky smoothie blender and a food processor, I just brought my Nutribullet and it definitely doesn't work as well as those two things when separated. But for me living in a small space and having to condense down, that's all I need. So literally the only kitchen appliances I have are my Instant Pot, my hot water kettle, and my Nutribullet. Would I love to have my air fryer back? 100%. Do I have space for it? No, I don't. So you really have to just prioritize and figure out what makes the most sense for you and do not try and fit them all. You will not use them enough that it does not make sense. My heart misses the little crispiness of that air fryer a lot. Along with kitchen appliances is the microwave. This can go either way. Some people solely use their microwave and they do not use their oven or their stove and they cook everything out of their microwave. In that case, keep your microwave. You need it. But I also know people who never ever touch their microwave and they reheat everything either on the stove or in the oven. If that's your situation, you don't need a microwave. Like don't feel like you need to go out and buy one if you're not gonna use it. Kitchens especially are the most challenging areas I feel like. It's really, really important to just go through your daily routine and keep in mind what are items I'm using and what are some things that I could let go of or use an alternative for if I don't have the space. So if your kitchen is really tight and you only use your microwave every once in a while, maybe 
try and not use it for a while and see how it feels to reheat everything on the stove or in the oven and if that is something that's sustainable for you because then that's one less big appliance that you need in your kitchen. Breville has those little, it's like a toaster oven slash microwave slash regular oven, convection oven all in one. If you don't even have space for like a stove and whatnot and you need to pick one appliance, that might be a really good one for you because it does all of those things in one and it's a good compact size. Like you could bake a whole pie in there or you can just reheat your lunch. So that's something to keep in mind if you are deciding microwave oven. Another thing I didn't bring with me to my studio apartment was decorative pillows. I do have a couple decorative pillows on my couch, which I really like and I use those and they're comfortable. But for my bed, I opted to have no decorative pillows. I didn't wanna have anything on there that was just for show. We have our four pillows that we use every night and that is it. I felt like having decorative pillows just is something that makes more of a mess when you're getting into bed and then just an added step you have to do when you make your bed. I really like the minimalistic style of just my white bedding. And so I didn't want to add extra things to my bed. I felt like they were unnecessary. For my couch, I really like them because like I said, I do use them a lot and I opted to get nicer pillow inserts from Ikea. They have like the down ones and they're very, very comfortable. I also nap on my couch a lot. So it was important for me to have a pillow on my couch that I could use when I'm taking a nap. And it was definitely worth it for us to get the nicer, squishier pillows instead of being cheap about it and getting the ones that weren't as nice and we wouldn't have enjoyed using as much. Along with this goes bedding. I don't have an extra set of sheets. That's kind of a lie. At this point in time right now, I actually do have an extra set of sheets because it's becoming winter here in Chicago and it's getting really cold. And so we wanted to get flannel sheets. So now we have a pair of like thin cotton sheets that we use when the weather's hot and we have our flannel sheets for when it's cold. But I don't keep multiple sets of sheets on hand. Up until like a week ago, we only had one set of sheets. This was really easy for me because when I'd need to wash the sheets, I'd wash them in the morning. They'd be cleaned and dry by the end of the night and then I'd remake the bed. I like it because it stops your buildup of laundry because I don't have sheets in the laundry waiting to be washed for a week. I take them off, wash them, put them back, and I feel like it's just a more productive way to deal with it. Then you don't need to have extra sheets laying around. The less things that you can keep on hand for like your just in case situations, the better I feel like. I really like that. I've never run into an issue where I've needed an extra pair of sheets and I don't have them. So that's a good one to keep in mind if you're thinking about things you can just not bring. The last one I wanna to talk to you about is exercise equipment. So I like to go to the gym a lot. I like to move my body and keep it active. And back when I lived in a house, I had two yoga mats, foam roller, I had resistance bands like I had the whole nine yards and I just literally never used them now that I moved into my apartment here there's a really nice gym in the building and it has yoga mats and resistant bands and foam rollers so I didn't need to bring any of these things with me if you're moving into a apartment complex that has a gym go check out all of the equipment they have before you get anything because it's not worth it for you to hold all of these things in your apartment where you could just go within your building and go use all of that stuff without having to store it yourself if your apartment does not have a gym and you want to work out then it might be worth it for you to just start with a yoga mat and go look up what are some workouts you can do that only require a yoga mat there's a ton of different YouTube channels that show them I'll link some of my favorite ones down below but you can find different workouts that will work for you with only having a yoga mat in your apartment and you don't need to have all of the other nonsense that goes with it I feel like that's a really easy way for people to spiral and feel like they then start to need weights in their apartment and jump ropes and all other sorts of things when really if you're dedicated to working out in your apartment you don't even need a yoga mat you could do it on the floor or on a carpet but if you have a gym then take advantage of that and use all of the fun things they have there without you keeping them in your own apartment I bought all of those items to keep in my house because I thought I would use them if I had them on hand I never used them like honestly I think I foam rolled once and that's it hopefully whoever got it from Goodwill like really loves foam rolling and got good use out of it because that was a waste of an item on my hand all right guys that's just a few items I want to tell you about that I don't think that you need if you're living in a small apartment or a studio. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to comment down below. Follow me on Instagram and shoot me a message. Let me know that you're a subscriber. I love interacting with you. I, okay, real quick, this week, I had two people come up to me and tell me that they watched my videos when I was like out in Chicago. I could cry. Like I'm so sweaty just thinking about it. I am not cool enough or for someone to be excited to meet me and it meant the freaking world to me. So like I appreciate you guys so, so much. I love interacting with you. Please shoot me messages, follow me on Instagram. Let's be friends. If you haven't already, definitely hit the subscribe button. I post videos twice a week about small space living and organization. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Guys, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. You're so 
support means so much to me. I appreciate it so much more than you literally know. Like I could cry. I appreciate you guys so much. All right, I'm babbling. Love you. Thank you. I'll see you next time.